So, uh, moving on to our next lecture here. So you guys saw how we can actually are able to create a background. Uh, so if I switch back to Katia, uh, edit, sheet background, as you can see, it gives you this grayish background and even the icons change slightly and you all of a sudden see that uh, frame and title block generation icon. That icon is only available in the background mode. You can't, you cannot see it in view generation mode. So as soon as I hit frame, I can say uh, create, I can hit OK, and uh, there it is. So now that I'm done, I'm going to just go edit, a working views, and it goes back to that normal mode. So how to create views? Well, uh, we need the view creation uh, toolbar in uh, Katia. So if I go back to Katia, and I look, as you can see, there's the view creation toolbar. Now everything is grayed out because I have no parts loaded, right? Uh, however, if I load a part in Katia, it is actually going to start lighting up all these icons. So let's go ahead and open something in Katia. I'm going to look at the preview here. Just pick up this uh, auxiliary view one. I'll hit open. And as you can see, Katia loads a 3D model for us. Now that I have a 3D model active, we can actually go into window and I can switch back to the drawing. Now, all of a sudden, uh, these icons are active. You can see the colors change. And you can see that the different views that I can build. So I'm interested in what they call a front view in Katia. So click on that. Nothing happens because if you look at the bottom left corner, what does it say? What that means is that software is looking for a 3D model. So switch over to your 3D model. Find a, a plane that's good for you, uh, at either this face or that face or anything else. I'm going to pick on this one here. Uh, it's going to bring that part in. Now we can use the compass to actually adjust our parts. Now if I like what I see, I'll simply click anywhere on the screen and that should generate my front view. And it labels it as so and the scale is one to one. Oh, let's see. Now ad adding additional projected views is quite simple. Uh, simply in Katia, have the view active that you want to project from and you guys know that activating views means that you have your border as orange, right? If it's blue, it's not active. It's just, if it's orange, it's active. So if you look, uh, you can see that this is the icon called projected views or projection views. Pick on it. And then you can see that I can actually project the top. I can also go ahead and project the side. And now we have a nice little setup there that we're looking for. Uh, note please that also it's probably not going to fit very well. You can see there's a lot of overlapping and it's not nicely looking. Uh, that's because this is only a B size. But if you go into your edit sheet background and you go into your uh, frame and title block icon again, you can see that you can also do a resize. But you can't resize unless you change your sheet size, of course. So what you do is right click on the sheet, uh, properties, switch to a bigger size. Let's say in this case I'd like to have a D size in this case. I'll hit OK. You notice that the sheet size changes, but the title block does not, and the frame doesn't. So switch over to sheet background again. Go to your uh, frame and title block. Click on resize. Click on OK, and it should be able to adjust to that new sheet size. And everything looks good. I'll simply go back into my working views, and we have ourselves a nice setup now. And now we have plenty of space to work with. Now, for projecting isometric views, you have to use a different icon. So, go ahead and look for an icon that looks like this here, called isometric views. Now, nothing happens because we need to switch to the 3D model. So, go into Window, switch over to Auxiliary Views, and find your orientation. So, let's say, for example, I'd like to have it this way. And click anywhere. Boom, it comes in. Now, if you don't like the orientation, you can still use the compass to do that and use anything that you like. So I'll, I like to have it this way, probably, and I'll just have it go into the corner, click anywhere, and there we are. Uh, now, you also have something called the view wizard. This allows you to quickly develop your top, front, and side, maybe an isometric if you like. So let me erase everything that you see on the screen. I'll show you again how to do that. So uh, beside creating views manually, you can also create the wizard. So run the wizard and choose the type of layout that you like. So I'm going to pick this one here, configuration one it's called, top, front, and side. See, it develops a standard view. 
Uh, now if you go next, you have the ability to add custom views too. So I click on isometric view, and you can drop it anywhere you like. I'll drop it in the top right, and I'll say finish. Now again, nothing happens because the bottom left is asking for a 3D model. So flip over, click anywhere on the part, and bring it over to your uh, sheet size. So now the cool thing is that you can also look at a preview. Now if you don't like the orientation of this guy, uh, just go into the compass and change it. And let's just say I want one part my front view to look something like this. I want my top to look like this. That's my right side view and that's my ISO. If you like your results, just click anywhere and you'll find that the software is able to develop exactly what you're looking for. And this locks at 45 degrees. Now remember that you also have different view modes uh, in Katia, how you create them. Now generally speaking, I like to use exact views, which means it's going to generate all the information, meaning all the math, all the vectors are being created well or right within the drawing. But there are cases when people would like to use what they call uh, CGR, approximate, or raster. Now what does that mean? Well, CGR will generate um, a format that's useful for dealing with large assembly drawings involving large amounts of data. So say you're developing an airplane drawing or a car drawing. You're not going to create all the vectors for the car because it will be very, very slow because that's a lot of data. Approximate is another way of uh, creating a view that's not as precise as an exact view, uh, but it will gen reduce the memory consumption. So if you're running out of RAM very quickly, try using approximate views. The worst quality that you can develop in Katia is called raster views, which is basically building a pixel, pixelated image. It's like taking a snapshot of your drawings. So there's no accuracy there. So the best is exact view. It generates everything for you. Then comes CGR, then approximate, then raster. Okay. Um, so here they explain more about CGR. And there's disadvantages. For instance, uh, obviously the quality won't be as high and you can't generate wireframe or points out of CGR and also you cannot create sectional no detail views, no breakouts, no unfolded views and no views from 3D so it's fairly limited it's good for top, front and side but that's it any type of auxiliary views or additional views that you want to create the software will refuse to create them if you're using CGR so just be careful with that it's not always the best choice and like I said, Kitty also allows you to project wireframe and points if you like. Generally speaking, we don't do that, but there are cases when people want to project their sketches sometimes onto their drawings. But that's fairly rare. We generally project 3D models, nothing else. Now, how to create dimensions? Um, many of us as engineers are very familiar with dimensioning, uh, so we're not going to delve too deep into that, but you guys are fairly familiar with you know how to dimension. I'm not going to bore you with the details but the toolbar for that is uh, is basically this one here so you can pull it out if you like and uh, I usually pull it out here and you can see that we can create all these different types of uh, dimensions so things like dimensioning linear chain dimensioning cumulated which means it goes back to the base uh, this is called stacked your standard length and distance angular radius dimension uh, diameter dimensioning if you have chamfers uh, thread dimensioning. You also can do coordinate dimensioning, which is really nice if you have points. Uh, also, you have the ability to do whole dimension tables and also coordinate dimension tables. Of course, we have the ability to create our sectional views in Katia. Uh, so, for example, I'd like to create a sectional view right this, right through this particular uh, view. So, in order to create a sectional, you have to double-click on the view. You notice how it changes from blue to an orange? That indicates that this now is an active view. So if I go to sectional and I hover over my part, notice that Katia is trying to snap. So let's just say we find the middle and we click and then we uh, double click outside. You notice that I'm actually able to develop that view and I'll just place it right here. And as you can see, the software just cuts through that object, uh, slices, and now you're looking at it from the right side. And that's a nice little uh, sectional view that we have here. In fact, it also labels it for you. So you do have also have the ability to run your sectional views on different profiles. So for example, if I uh, do a sectional, let's just say I run this one here, then I can stop and change direction, go this way and then come down this way. Maybe I want to capture a halt here or something. 
then Kitty will accommodate that change as well. 